two. All rise. Look who has come about for the elements of justice. Yes, and really? Wow. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. My dog is barking for no reason. All rise. And blah de blah de blah de blah, you know, because, yeah, Princess Luna is here because she is the prosecutor for this case. Yes. Um, oh, boy, Luna, you... you I don't... <laughs> I don't usually brush ponies hairs um because you know it's more of a a girly thing to do <laughs> but um yeah uh but there she is in all her splendor there's a hair a tail yeah princess luna in all her splendor, <clears throat> I'm just going to leave her standing next to me right there. There we go. She's next to the bed. <laughs> um, but yes, what's up, every pony? It is me, Elusive Al here. Welcome to the next episodic episode of My Little Pony, Ace Attorney. Elements of justice. Yes, crusading for a turnabout. Second case. Still on the second case. And this is episode four, trial. Yes, we are continuing on with the trial uh, that happened in the last episode. As I said, Princess Luna is the prosecution for this case. They are... Um, they are doing for the claims for uh, Scootaloo and um, turning turning page on the on the accusations of murdering turning pages father, which is a royal order, um, and then when uh, when Sakura came on. To the stand to give her test to give her testimony saying that uh i think i think she she saw uh like a shadow figure of some sorts and then um and then athena said and then the, the, then the, the whole uh accusation of time time wise is saying like sakura was I think last or, f or first or last on the scene? I can't remember now. Um, b b between the times, and uh, she was gonna go down until Princess Luna was like, "Are you mad? You shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to help you." <laughs> um, so yeah, she 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 was she was helping uh, Athena with this case, even though she was playing as. The prosecutor role, and may I say, for an um, an added uh, statement as well for Princess Luna's voice voice actress as well. Absolutely amazing! I absolutely loved uh, the uh, the voice actress that played for Princess Luna, and the rhymes as well. Whoever played Sakura, absolutely fantastic. Props to the writers for that show for giving the the rhymes. For Sakura's absolutely perfection, absolutely great. There was th there was not one rhyme that was like out of place or out of sorts or anything like that. It was all perfection. It was all there. It was all there. Everything, everything from start to finish, with the whole rhymes of the whole of the whole writing process to give it towards. The, to, to give it towards Sakura, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, um, 
the glass shards then were present, um, which leads towards um, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. And this is the point now for where we are going to get them two up to the stand and give their testimonies um, to uh, to state out what happened during that event. So, we're going to have a recap. We're going to have a recap uh, because I did uh, check a few seconds of this video and we are going to have a recap. And then we're going to get right on into the episode. So, with all that being said, let's get this officially started in three, two, one. Let's go. Of Elements of Justice. What you got? Yep. You know, the prosecution is ready. Nothing was missing from the crime scene. Fina's first trial. Elsewhere. If the crime scene lacks even a drop of blood to speak of, that casts significant doubt over whether the victim was stabbed there at all. My name is Akora. It's entirely possible that our witness, Miss Sakura, is Royal Order's true killer. You shan't be relying on that theory for much longer. She's trying to help them. If she is not provided. Silver spoons. Yes, the shards that belong to uh, Silver Spoon's glasses. I still love that photo frame <laughs> up there as well. February 14th, 10.45 a.m. Ponyville District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. <laughs> Twilight helped. Twilight helped. Just completely. I had no proof. I was just desperate. Just completely right off the bat. No strategy thinking whatsoever. I was putting her in danger. Straight off. No reason to doubt. But that's not the worst thing they did. Oh, well. I heard Twilight too. She tried to stop me, but I didn't listen. And because of that, we almost lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm fine. I'm as good as sex and I'm fine. Yeah, no, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you try to, co you try to copyright from Apollo, but it's not working. Apologize. 
this point. And Sakura accepted your apology. Mm. But that doesn't change what I did, Twilight. It was stupid. It was beyond stupid. And I shouldn't have done it in the first place. Well, I suppose it was a little rash. The worst of it, though, was that I couldn't fix my mistakes on my own. If it wasn't for you and Prosecutor Luna, turning in Scootaloo would have... They would have... Mm. Let's face it, Twilight. I'm a lousy defense attorney. And after what happened there, forget not being good enough to be a lawyer. I don't even deserve to be one. Oh, Athena. I bet Mr. Wright wouldn't have had to do what I did. Well, that's not exactly true. What? Phoenix! Phoenix! What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with the others? I was, but I wanted to stop by and give my compliments. You two did a great job out there, Athena, all things considered. All, all things, uh, boss, are you sure you were watching the right trial? Because I'm pretty sure I put on the worst performance in history. Well, it was pretty touch and go for a while, admittedly. But you hmm. kept the trial going and gave your clients another fighting chance. I'd say that counts for something. Hmm. What I said, what I did, you, you must be so ashamed of me. Not at all, Athena. After all, I did the exact same thing last time I was in Equestria. Oh. What? You did? Yes. But why? Here we go. Someone to a new world in order to defend someone accused of murder. Just the idea alone. Turn about storm. Game. Even so, I approached that trial like I would any other back in the day. And that naivete cost me greatly. I was completely unprepared. Maybe more than I'd ever been. I was no match for the prosecution's case against Rainbow. It all came to a head when the prosecution summoned a key eyewitness that could place Rainbow at the murder scene. It seemed like an airtight conclusive testimony at first, but the cross-examination revealed that it contained several contradictions. Contradictions that suggested the witness herself could be the true culprit of the murder. Mm. That witness was Fluttershy. Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Wait, what? But it did happen. I was desperate. It happened. The judge was about to hand down the guilty verdict, and I needed a way to stop it from happening. So, even though I was aware of the severity of the accusation, I indicted Fluttershy on the charge of murder. Boss, you didn't really think that. Yeah. She was guilty? No, not in the slightest. Yeah. Oh, I can remember the emotions just pouring out of that scene as well. It was so heart crushing. So, so heart crushing. Excuse me, sir. I'm going to have to ask you to please return to your seat in the gallery. The attorney and her counsel need time to prepare their case before the trial resumes. I'd better get going then. Wouldn't want the bailiff to yell at me. Hmm. Good luck, you two. Thank you, Phoenix. I. Thanks, boss. <sighs> Athena. I, yeah, Twilight? I know you regret accusing Sakura, and mm. we're still thankful that you apologized to her. However, 
I'm glad as well that they brought up the whole first shy angle as well, because that's what it felt like with Sakura. Sorry, Twilight. Even so, I can't dwell on what's already passed. Yeah. I said last night that I would stand with you in court, and that's exactly what I intend to do. If we want to save Turning Page and Skittling, we should focus on the rest of the trial. After that, we can work things out between us. Right. Besides, I think it's about time we ask those two some questions. Huh? Oh, Skittling, Turning Page. Hey. Hello, Princess Twilight. Miss Sykes. Seems. It has something to do with Diamond Tiara and Silverstein, doesn't it? Diamond Tiara, to be specific. Of course. And when I attacked her earlier that day, her dress got dirty. She told her mom about what happened. And then they went to see my mom. Right. This is all stuff we heard in the trial earlier. After mom heard about what happened, she went to go find me. She was really mad and wanted me to apologize to Diamond Tiara and her mother. I don't see why I should have to. I, I don't regret what I did. <laughs> Not one bit. Oh. A true member of the Royal Guard should never have to apologize for doing the right thing. Sorry, Turning. What about the money, though? It wasn't just an apology spoiler bitch wanted. Yeah, I know. That whole discussion happened after Mom brought me back home. Diamond and her mother came over so I could formally apologize. And that's when Mrs. Rich demanded my mom to pay her back for the dresses. Before I could even try anything, Mom sent me away. She forced me to stay in my room the whole time they were talking. I overheard everything, though. I couldn't believe Mom agreed to pay back the bits. We don't have that kind of money. If only she would have let me get that mare. I would have. Sorry. Did you say Mrs. Rich and Diamond Tiara came over to your house? Yes. Yeah. Why? Yes. Wait, no. No. Go ahead, Athena. Had you thought of something? Well, um, I guess. You think maybe Diamond Tiara could have planted the magazines at that point? It does line up very nicely with our theory. I assume you didn't see anything, Turning Page? Y yeah I was in my room the whole time after apologizing. I don't know what happened in the house after that, aside from the conversation between my mom and Mrs. Rich. Well, without Turning Page's testimony, it's unfortunately not conclusive. I doubt Fair Devotion saw anything, so at this point it's still only a theory. That clears up that mystery for now, I hope. Now for another one. Turning, Skittling, can I ask you two something else? What is it, Miss Sykes? What actually happened that night in the forest when you arrived at the blackmail site? Um, sure, we can tell you about that. Sorry, Turning? Yeah, so what happened? You kind of figured this out yesterday, but there was a fight there between Turning Page and me and Diamond Tiara and Silverstein. Mm. You can go over it for us. Any details you can remember will help, even if they're small or might not seem important. Well... <laughs> Here we go. We got there at exactly 10, but it looked like we were the only ones to arrive. Here we are. This is the meeting place. Are you ready, Skidula? Yeah. We just have to make sure we can't what we came here for. Can you pass me the roll of golden silk? Are you sure? I can keep holding it with my 
magic. I know, but now that we're here, I feel like it's my responsibility. All right. Things turning have changed. Now, where are they? Oh, darn it, get back. If they see your face, they'll freak. Well, well, well. Looks like you do have brains in those heads of yours after all. Yes. DT. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to know is 
<laughs> I can Im I can imagine just dying in tiara, just dragging himself. Down. Come on, we gotta get the tiara. <laughs> Even though it's disintegrating in the gorge. Could Luna somehow be in the connection for this uh, during the crime scene? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was during the night. And you know, the, 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 the princess of night, the princess Luna. Yeah. That was me. Did you see Scootaloo or anything else out of the ordinary while leaving? Maybe someone carrying the scooter back to the scene? I'm afraid not, Miss Sykes. Really? Then how did the scooter get back to the crime scene? Defendant, attorney, the trial's about to resume. Head back inside on the double. Mmm. Like we'll yeah. All right. Scootaloo. Put that towards... Put that towards the um, Come on, Trini. the cross examination. Well, I guess you've got to go in too. Ready, Athena? <laughs> About as ready as I can be, I suppose. Let's go, Twilight. All right. For interrupting. Oh, private eye. Miss Sykes. Private eye? What's he doing here? Sir, might the defense have a moment longer before they enter the courtroom? It's urgent. I don't get paid extra to babysit tardy lawyers, you know. But fine. A few minutes, maximum. Splendid. Thank you, sir. <laughs> what do you mean by urgent, Private Eye? I have some things here you would do well to look through. First, are you aware of the clearing in the forest between the crossroads and Sakora's hut? I see it, yeah. Right here. Well, what about it? An investigation was recently performed there. And traces of a white blood stain were found. You can see it right here in this photograph. Hmm. And do you know who the blood belongs to? I do. The blood has been identified as belonging to the victim. Royal the order. What? Really? The tests confirm it, Miss Sykes. The blood is, without question, that of the victims. Jeez. I can't it. it says blood. <laughs> Still. Okay, so 
We can confirm now that it's Royal Old is blood. And not like um some the 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 yeah the, it was only one one victim not two. Oh. You say this was found near the crossroads? That is correct. Specifically, it was found concealed within the underbrush. It seems my team missed it during our investigation of the woods. Broken handlebar. The broken handlebar that has been missed from school was scooter. If the handlebar was found at the crossroads, then I guess that answers the question of how far Scootaloo made it on her scooter. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about the shape. This was found in front of the Nightmare Bank statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else at it first. But our mutual acquaintance realized it possessed the same enchantment found in Timberwolves. As to why it was at the statue, or if it's related to the current incident, I can't say for certain. So, so was it a decoy then for someone to lead the Timberwolves towards... Towards uh, Royal Order. Thank you for delivering all of this to us, Private Eye. We appreciate it. You are very welcome, Miss Sykes. I wish you both the best. Oh, before you go, Private Eye. But then, how how would how do you explain about the mer? Your Highness. Could you contact this mutual acquaintance for us? I'm not sure if it'll lead to anything, but I'd like for the crossroads to be tested forensically. I'll get to work immediately, Princess. Thank you, Private Eye. Are you not done over there? I'm, I'm theorizing in my head. <laughs> I'm giving my um perception towards what possibly could have occurred, but I don't know. Uh, February 14th, 11 15. Wait, was it 30? I forgot now. Uh, Pottermill District Court, court room number five. <laughs> Okay. We were also able to confirm that the young filly received a brand new pair of glasses yesterday afternoon. Ah, uh, well. This makes it nigh impossible for the shards to belong to any pony but her. Of course. Think what children could be involved in the Spoonhead murder. The court acknowledges this report as evidence. Glass shards. Shards found at the crime scene that once belonged to a pair of near side glasses. Their owner is Silver Spoon. Is Miss Silver Spoon ready to take the stand? Yes, she is. Along with Diamond Tiara. Then please bring them in. Finally! You've got them on the stand. This is where the real battle begins. Let's go. Witnesses, please state your names for the record. OMG! Oh my god. Uh, names please. Don't you know who I am? Um to some extent, yeah. Yeah. No, none of it is particularly good. Well, from what she gathered, yeah. If you know who I am, then She's she's no good. She was she was no good with her, but now she's of course, you know. What happened in Friendship is Magic, if, she, if yeah. She was a no good. But she's a no good. Diamond and Tiara. Yes, young Billy. You know who we are, don't you? I can't say I 
How? No, 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 he wouldn't. The children! <laughs> children! The eyes of the law who are not richer, more well known, or better than others. All are equal before this court. You will state your names and occupations, just like every pony else who takes the stand. <laughs> what a way to put these brats in their place, huh? Bills yes, and Jenna Cole's my favorite princess, everyone. <laughs> This is why she's my favorite. And I'm Silver Spoon, uh, her friend. Oh, Silver Spoon, you are the Silver Spoon. Was that just? <laughs> are they okay? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 well, <laughs> coming from me, I've just got these new pairs as well. But guys, um, I think I've got to mention as well. New pairs of glasses. <laughs> so I'm kind of like with um, Silver Spoon here. We have witness testimony that you broke when they were broken as well. So tell us, how did your glasses break? Gone on last month. Well, well, Golden Pixie. It seems that recess did you some good. You aren't the quivering mess from before. Golden pig, not the golden pixie. <laughs> it is time both you and Miss Diamond Tiara testify as to how they broke in the first place. Uh, I have to explain? That is what testifying usually amounts to, yes. Well, I'm glad to explain ourselves. We would? Just follow yourself. Wow. <laughs> Look at the anim- I'll tell you what, the animation for the- for, for this, for Elements of Justice is absolutely incredible. It's just- ah, oh, I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't praise it enough. <laughs> right. No, there was, there was. So you got there only after everything had played out. If you consider the time they entered the forest, they would most likely. Ten twenty. Ten twenty. The blackmail negotiation took place at ten. Clearly, they could not have been involved. Are you sure that little impossibility will disappear once I find a flaw in these two girlies' words? Hmm. That said, this is a bit of a problem. We have to deal with two witnesses testifying <laughs> at the same time. Ugh. How am I supposed to do that? You got this, you Athena. Athena. You look a little rough. You got this. Kinda. This is my first time dealing with two witnesses at once. Yeah. And they seem to back each other up pretty well. Of course. <laughs> I didn't exactly say that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Yes, it may seem that they're able to form a wall to stop us, but one of them could just as easily be a tweedling. We have good reason to believe they're lying, and lies always beget more lies. See through one. Then the whole story falls apart. So all I have to do is find a contradiction in one of their statements, and then their whole combined testimony will crumble? Exactly. It should just be like any other testimony. Although, I suggest that you pay attention to how they respond to each other when you're questioning them. It could prove beneficial. All right, guys. I'm going to have to pause it. I need a toilet break. All right, everypony, and I'm back. And I have uh, a pint of Vimto with me because, well, um, 
past couple of days, actually, I've been, well, not been well myself. But fortunately, I uh, did a COVID test and uh, it, and um, and it came back negative. So I don't have COVID, so it's just a normal flu, really. So, yeah. So, yeah, always stay hydrated, guys. Always stay hydrated. <clears throat> Let me put this in my little mini fridge next to me right here slide that in close it there we go all right all right let's resume with the rest of the trial where uh, the testimony has just been given out and uh, yeah cross-examination time and let's do it in three, two, one, go. I'll make sure to do just that. Cross-examination. How the glasses broke. Okay. You didn't think going there at night was dangerous? Entering the Everglade Forest at all was risky enough, let alone going as far as the ruins. Well, I just figured that, um, the thrill of learning... I mean, you could have learned about, um... You know, the... the... the hippogriffs, the... Um, you know... <laughs> Oof. Yeah, just learn, just learn something else that doesn't feature areas that are dangerous. That you have to venture towards too. Exactly. Although they did make the uh, the blackmail no. There's there's weak There's the weak link. <sighs> yeah. Well, there you go. Tira, there's something blatantly wrong with that statement. There you go. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Yeah. What do you mean? You said you saw no pony else before crossing the bridge, but that is impossible. What? Why? Because there was someone else you 
should have seen that night. The one pony, or should I say zebra, living in the forest, <laughs> Zakora. If the court remembers from her testimony, Zakora remained standing on the forest path after she saw Turning Page and Scootaloo walk by. If Diamond Tiara and Silver Smooth entered the forest afterwards, he would have saw them. It would have been impossible for them to not have seen Zakora. Yeah. Oh yeah, she yeah, she 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 was squinting. <laughs> young but still come on correct testimony witnessing the crime like we said before we went to the castle ruins for a school assignment yeah we suddenly heard a loud noise and we immediately looked across the court to see what happened 
Cora? Would you say that Turning Page and Scootaloo were the ones who killed the victim? Well, we... All we saw was that standing next to the body. Yeah, that's okay. all. Okay. I see. Now then, Golden Pixie, please begin the cross-examination. Uh, okay. Why did Luna ask them those questions? Is she trying to guide me somewhere again? Uh, never mind that. Focus. All right. Like we said before, we went to the castle ruins for a school assignment. But we suddenly heard a loud noise, and we immediately looked across the court to see what happened. When and where did you hear this loud noise? Well, we can't really say when we heard it, but it was definitely some sort of clang. Clang? inside the castle entrance. A clang? Zakora testified that she heard a clang as well at around 10 to feet. Do you think that's when you might have heard it? Um, yeah. Probably when I heard the clang. from Silver Spoon. Why did she sound so surprised? You're not the only one who noticed that, Athena. Mm. I it too. This could be the weak link in their testimony. Really? Whatever Diamond said made Silver react. Perhaps he has a different opinion about that statement. Yes. I think it would be a good idea to press this even further. I'll give it a shot. Go ahead. <laughs> but slammed on the desk. <laughs> on this point earlier in the trial. It was all for this trap, wasn't it? A 
if Diamond Sierra and Silver Spoon did see the murder happen, they would have known this. But the very fact that they made this mistake proves that they did not see the murder at all. <laughs> to have a good explanation for this. Uh, well, we... Perhaps I could be of assistance here. <clears throat> what do you mean, Prosecutor Luna? What is she claiming this time? Your Honor, I request that these two testify one last time. Testify? About what? About what happened when they approached the victim's body. Hmm, I see. Defense, your thoughts? We've reached the heart of this whole trial. Diamond and Silver are the key to finding out what happened at the castle that night. Once we hear this testimony, I have a feeling this trial will take a rather dramatic turn. Twilight, just focus on the testimony for now, if you know. Uh, uh all right. Mm -hmm. The defense agrees, Your Honor. Let's hear what they have to say. Very well. Witnesses? Please testify about what happened when you approached the body. Silver and I were taking the castle ruins, so we didn't know what was going on outside. After we were done exploring, we left the castle, and then we came across a dead body at the gorge. No clue was around. All we saw was the body. Sylvie was so shocked, she fell backward and broke her back. We wanted to run away immediately, but then we saw the secret to the distance. We had to hide so we wouldn't be seen. You said in your previous testimonies that you saw Scootaloo and Turning Page at the scene. But now you claim you didn't see any pony? Why is that? The silent treatment, huh? Hmm. That's all right. I'm pretty sure I know why. Care to fill us in, Golden Pixie? They knew that Scootaloo and Turning would be at the scene. By matching their testimony to that fact, they wanted to make their testimonies more credible. Is this true, witnesses? Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> Still denying it, are you? I have a question I'd like to ask myself, witness. You said that you hid from Zakora when she arrived. Where, exactly? There are some stairs going down to the gorge. We figured that was the best place to hide. Oh, yeah, where she dragged her. We got every once in a while to see if she was gone. Once she was, we quietly followed and left the forest. The staircase? Mm. Didn't Turning say that's where they went when he threw Diamond's crown? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now then, Miss Sykes, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright, cross-examination. Number one. Witness in the crime. Silver and I were taking the castle ruins, so we didn't know what was going on outside. I want to talk about that claim you two heard. You said you heard one, but Silver claimed she heard two. Any idea why you didn't hear the same thing? Or what it could have been? Probably someone inside the castle. One of the noises must have come from deeper within and only Sylvie caught it. The castle contains armor from an older time. It's possible one of the suits fell over, eliciting the sound. Yet, Zakora heard a similar sound at around the same time. It could just be a coincidence. Many of the noises we heard happened at the same time. Both came from different places. Another discussion that will clearly bear no fruit. I do hope you'll spare us the displeasure, Golden Pixie. Yeah. Unless I have definitive proof of what this noise was, this will get us nowhere. I suppose I should just move on. Please continue with your testimony. After we were done exploring, we left the castle, and then we came across a dead body at the gorge. And the two of you actually approached the body? Well, it was right there, at the foot of the bridge. It's not like there's any way we could avoid it. Admittedly, we didn't know who was dead at first. We thought he was passed out or something. But when we saw that hole in his head, there 
I'm thinking about the scooter again with uh, what um, what Athena said. Scoot the 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 the. I'm saying the scooter Lou with the scooter. Uh, the scooter fell off. Be fell the handle of the scooter fell off before the crime. So, so, yeah, the handle wasn't on, yeah, you know what I'm getting at. There you go, right there. Yes, the murder. The murder. The weapon. The weapon. You observed the whole scene. Um, Silver Spoon, Silver Spoon. What? What's up the silence? Look at Silver Spoon. Because you just admitted that you knew this blood stain was, was a, a cape. cape. In fact, you were so certain it never even made you suspect that the victim may have been dead when you were approaching the body. That begs the question, though. How did you know? Mm. during your testimony there's no way it just slipped your mind something as eye-catchingly red as this lying directly under a body would definitely make it impressive for you to fail to mention it there's only one possibility when you first approached the body miss cape was it there wait so that means nice to see you following along your honor if the cape wasn't present when these witnesses first approached the body, then that means it was placed there after they discovered it. And since Diamond knew right away that this was a cape, it should be obvious you must have placed it. Uh, uh. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. It was you too. Oh! Oh. 
get him what he wanted. In retaliation, you framed Scootaloo for the murder. Objection! Come now, Golden Pixie. Surely your memory isn't that bad. The clippings which make up the letter in question were found in Fair Devotion's home. These two couldn't have been involved. Objection! Yeah, but... That might have been the case earlier, Prosecutor Luna, but not anymore. Is that so? Then please, elucidate the court. Do you remember what we learned earlier? About how turning ruined these witnesses' dresses and what spoiled rich demanded? Of course. That very incident was the impetus for the blackmail. Well, during the recess, Turning Page told us about something else that happened afterwards. Something else? It's true that Spoiled Rich wanted Fair Devotion to pay for the damages, but she also wanted Turning Page to personally apologize for what he did, which is why she brought Diamond to Fair Devotion's house when she went to discuss the compensation. I see. And why is that important to the Sykes? Your Honor, the prosecution claims that the fact that the magazine cuttings were found in Fair Devotion's house shows that she was the blackmailer. However, what Turning Page told us opens up another possibility, that the magazines were planted there for authorities to find. Planted by the one pony with the perfect opportunity to do so. <coughs> Diamond Tiara! Defense? That is speculation at best. And it relies entirely on Turning Page and Fair Devotion's testimonies being the truth. You must provide solid evidence. I will not tolerate yet another baseless accusation. Don't worry, Prosecutor Luna. I don't intend on making the same mistake. Is that yes. so? Then, by all means, <laughs> proceed. Yes. During the recess, I learned about what happened during the negotiations. As I said before, a fight broke out between Turning Page and Scootaloo, and Diamond Tara and Silver Spill. During the fight, Scootaloo left the scene on her scooter, taking the stolen cakes and fabric roll with her in the wagon. Mm. Turning Page followed afterwards, but not before he tossed Diamond Tiara's tiara into the gorge to distract the fillies. Right. What happened afterward is revealed by these witnesses' last testimony. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon went down the stairs to get the tiara back. They saw Royal Order's body when they came back up. Wanting revenge, they grabbed Scootaloo for a step by planting the cake under his head. <laughs> you put up a good fight, but you're still lacking, Golden Pixie. Lacking? Lacking. Your story is precisely that. A story. One of them. How so? The scooter left behind at the scene. It contradicts your narrative. You claim that Scootaloo left the scene with that scooter, but she couldn't have. After all, the scooter was found at the crime scene itself. In addition, your argument as to why these two witnesses would try to frame Scootaloo for murder makes no sense. Recall the wagon. When it was found, the roll of golden silk lay in its bed, the very item that Diane Tiara and Silver Spoon supposedly demanded. It was free for the taking. They would have gotten what they wanted. There was no reason to retaliate. And since they didn't take the roll, that suggests they were not responsible for the blackmailing in the first place. <laughs> That's no bueno. <laughs> See now, Golden Pixie? Your claims are right with holes. If the two fillies at the stand really did as you claim, then what would they gain by placing the cape under the victim's head? <clears throat> I highly recommend taking a good moment to rethink your theory. This will decide the entire outcome of this trial. The entire outcome? Talk about pressure. Pushing down on me. But to rethink my entire yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just got I just got that in my head. That was clever. Well done. <laughs> I see what you did. I see what you did. Exactly. 
Yeah. He would have stabbed him in the head if he were standing upright. Hmm. So they wouldn't have been trying to cover up their own crime by framing somebody else. If framing is out of the picture, then maybe the cape had a more practical use. Practical? Think back to what Diamond Tiara said about how she felt regarding the body. That's right. She said she didn't even want to get near it because he was dead and covered in blood. Exactly. But with the cape staying there, one of those problems would cease to be mm. find that out we'll find that out Again. <laughs> Very well. 
Oh, God. The weak link. The weak link. Boom. Would you look here? <laughs> Huh? What is it, witness? We confess. We confess. What? Just say? Shut up. Don't say anything. I'm sorry, BT. Witness, what exactly are you confessing to? Go on. Please, go on. Everything that happened. The police who blackmailed the Kitty Mark Crusaders were us. No police. So 
Silver spoon. Well done. Well done. I'll give I'll give credit where the credit's due for Silver Spoon because you know. <laughs>